Hello and welcome to Fidelity Next. I'm your host, Tamara Radichai. Whether you're a student, recent graduate, or looking to make moves in your career, positioning yourself for a new opportunity makes it that much easier to move through the recruitment process confidently. In addition to a number of experienced roles currently available at Fidelity, we're also in the middle of our campus recruitment period, on the lookout for co-op students for our fall term. The first step in landing your new job is impressing the recruiter. And who better to tell us all about how to do that than one of our own? Joining us today to share insights and tips on how to make yourself shine during the recruitment process is staffing specialist Magda Kajo. Magda, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me, Tamara. So let's start things off the way that an interview would start. Magda, tell us about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Um, so in terms of my journey here at Fidelity, it's been amazing. I've loved it here so far. Before joining full time as a staffing specialist bilingual, I actually did two co-op terms here. So I did one in the summer of 2022 in FCC's risk management team. And then recently this summer, I was in a Fidelity Investment in Canada's product research team. Amazing. And what was that co-op experience like, especially being in different uh, departments? It was great. It was similar but different. Very different areas, of course. But I learned a lot in terms of the analytical skills um, and the actual know-how of the material and the industries. And it gave me a good sense of what it would be like to work in those roles after I finished school. Um, but then HR kind of came calling and I was able to use all of those transferable skills that I had from all those other roles and then also use my French too so that was a bonus. Amazing, I love how all that fits together. Um, that's a great segue into the next question, um, switching gears over to recruiting. What does the recruiting process look like at Fidelity and is it different for students and experienced people? So we have a great team of recruiters who will outline the process for all of the candidates from the beginning and that typically starts actually with uh, the phone screen. So if you meet the minimum requirements for the role that you're applying for, minimum requirements being um, required years of work experience, education, or any other skills and knowledge or designations that would be useful, um, those are all put in the posting. So after that, and the phone screen is just kind of confirming that information and seeing as well what candidates can also bring to the table mm -hmm. in terms of other skills. Um, and then going from that, if you're successful in the phone screen, you'd move on to our interview rounds. So our interview rounds, for the most part, are done virtually, but they also do sometimes do them in person. Um, and there, you'll expect to meet the hiring manager and even the team. Um, if you advance further in the process, then you can expect to meet with um, senior levels of, of management and leadership beyond that. For students, uh, it's a similar dynamic, maybe not as many rounds, mm -hmm. um, but I'm more versed in, in more of the full-time employment. Mm -hmm. And how long typically does that process take or can that process take? It depends on the role. Some roles are um, harder to fill. I mean, they're all great opportunities, but some do take time to fill. Mm -hmm. I think the standard is somewhere between four to eight weeks. Good to know. Um, so for those who are a little impatient, keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, what are some of the top skills you look for at Fidelity when you're screening for candidates? Yeah, that's a great question. There are a few skills that I look for like, across the board, um, especially when looking at different applications because we receive so many. Um, strong communication skills, no matter what position you're in, they are essential. And they go hand in hand actually with collaboration because part of communication is being able to not only just express your ideas in a way that's clear, confident, respectful, um, but it's a two-way street. You mm -hmm. have to then be an active listener and listen to your team's perspectives, your team's opinions, and find a middle ground to really come up with the best solutions that ultimately make the team more productive and also make you come out of it um, better at the end of the day. Active listening is definitely a skill and one that you can uh, keep sharpening over time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, like I said in the beginning, one of the first questions that usually kicks off an interview is, you know, the infamous, tell me about yourself. What's a good way to answer that question? So at Fidelity, we do things a little differently. We don't ask sort of blanket questions like that. We do really try to tailor the questions to the specific opportunity that mm -hmm. we're trying to recruit for. So with that being said, the questions in the beginning of the interview, we'll try to get the candidate to express their interest more, especially to um, the recruiters, but also to the hiring managers when you get to that interview round, to express their passion for that position, um, but also be able to tie in their past experiences into that overall general introduction they can give. If you want to add a few uh, interesting facts about yourself that 
could also be um, related to the role. That's also mm -hmm. nice to do too. Um, but overall, we try to keep it so that the manager comes out of that interview having a really good understanding of who that candidate is and how they can adapt to that role both in the short term and the long term. So, Because we also at Fidelity, we look to not only just find talent, but retain it for many years to come. Yeah, how you can grow in the role, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so that's sort of things you can say in an interview. What about things that you don't say? What are some kind of nonverbal um, attributes or mannerisms that you can keep in mind when you're in an interview? Yeah, I know, you're right. Body language is very, very key. Um, like I said, we do a mix of interviews. So we do virtual and in person. Doesn't mean that body language isn't still important, because even on camera, it, you can definitely see that. Um, some things to keep in mind, keeping eye contact, so that's really important. Sometimes with virtual interviews, you don't, as people might have notes on the side because they want to be prepared, and that's fine to do, but you don't want to be glancing around too often. You want to be focused on uh, the interviewers, you want to be focused on the questions that they're asking you, and that's part of the active listening component. Um, as well, you want to try to smile when appropriate, to also be friendly. It can be a situation um, where you might be a bit nervous, and that's totally normal, but you want to try and become more relaxed as, as the interview uh, proceeds. And then also dressing mm -hmm. appropriately is something uh, that we want to consider as well. Um, In-person interviews, you see that more often mm -hmm. because people will dress up to, to come in for an in-person interview. But even online, even if it's virtual, at least the top half, right. find a nice dress shirt or, or find a nice shirt that, that's professional, something with a collar could be really nice to keep in mind as well, just to uh, make sure that you differentiate that interview from your other life outside of the camera. Are there any colors or anything in particular that are like yeses or noes? Neutrals are nice, mm -hmm. so white, black, gray, beige, those are pretty standard colors, even even in like a nice navy blue. Um, but if you want to wear color, that's fine too, showcase your personality. Right, I uh, <laughs> <laughs> like to do that anytime I can. Exactly. Okay, cool. Um, so at the end of the interview, you know, the tables turn and usually that's the opportunity where the candidate can ask the questions to the hiring manager. So. What's an example of a really good question to ask at the end of an interview? So that's such an important point because some candidates get so nervous in the interview that they're like, oh yeah, no, I have no questions, I understand it. Thanks so much for your time. And we really want you to ask questions as well to make sure that you're totally clear on not just the position but also the team that you're potentially um, coming to join. So asking the hiring manager those questions, you wanna try to focus on questions that are more specific to the role or the team. Questions that the recruiter will probably not be able to answer mm -hmm. in, in much detail. They'll be able to give you a general gist, but the hiring manager is really the one that, for example, will be able to tell you what a day in the life mm -hmm. of that job could look like, what the team dynamic looks like, um, sort of the organizational structure. So. That, those are the questions that you should really be considering. If you want to ask more unique questions, you can even ask the manager what their leadership style is um, or opportunities for growth from that position within the team or for the organization. Those are really nice for the manager to see as well because it shows that you're thinking long term and to be in the position um, for a longer period of time. Awesome, thank you. Speaking of questions, um, if anyone has any questions for Magda, please feel free to drop them in the comments and we will get back to you at some point after the show. Um, so after the interview, um, I know it's pretty customary to follow up, you know, say thank you, all that kind of stuff. What's a healthy level of follow up? Like when does it become too much? Yeah, that's a good question. So we always appreciate the candidates are eager, especially after doing an interview and you, know, you feel like you killed it, that's great. Um, but there is still the rest of the process. So typically, you're not the only person being interviewed. Right. <laughs> there are, there's, a, there's a whole um, roster of candidates, so to speak, that the manager really is taking their time and the hiring team is really taking their time to get to know and they need time to also review the notes that they make through that interview, review that candidate's application once again, once all the interviews are done, to really come to a decision. Um, but actually a great way to mitigate any sort of awkwardness in the future is to take that opportunity at the end of the interview to ask when you can expect to follow up. So if they say two weeks, you can follow up in two weeks. A nice touch is also to send a thank you note after the interview. Mm -hmm. That way it's easier to follow up from your thank you note right. in two weeks time, for example. And hopefully you'll have some, some uh, updates by then. Cool, okay. So let's talk about AI. I know it's pretty much unavoidable at this point in time. Most, if not all people, 
are likely using some form of it to you know, help write their resume, cover letter, maybe even follow up emails. Um, is it obvious when you when you see that in resumes and like what are your what are your thoughts on that? There are some giveaways that show that. So if you're if the jargon in the resume or the cover letter is too formal or repetitive or it seems like the sentences are never ending, they're never really getting to the point, it shows that there's probably a computer behind that because typically when you communicate as a human, you will have a point in there somewhere. Um, and sometimes resumes, if you use the exact job posting, it'll basically spit out a copy of that job posting just rearranged. So that's not something that you really want to see. Of course, it is recommended that you tailor your resume mm -hmm. to the particular job opportunity um, that you're applying to, but you can do that in a way that's much more natural. Really take a look at um, the key responsibilities of the role, mm -hmm. and that'll give you some keywords that you can use, and that way you can also see how you can apply that within your own personal experiences and, and your work experiences to be able to transfer that over and really highlight your unique experience mm -hmm. in the process. That's what we want to see. We want to see uniqueness in each candidate. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even if you are using that as a starting point, I think it probably helps to screen through and add in a few of your own words here Definitely. and there, right? Yeah, bring that human human touch that to it and make it authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so networking, that's a pretty broad term. That could be, you know, seeing someone on the elevator or stopping them to chat in the hallway or, you know, reaching out to someone on LinkedIn for a coffee chat or attending a industry event or campus event. What are, um, what are some tips you have for networking and how to best kind of position yourself? Yeah, you've outlined some great examples there. So there's ways to network formally and informally. So formally are those like campus events or job fairs even. So we have a great campus recruitment team where we actually have student ambassadors across the country and many schools that are able to provide that firsthand experience of what their co-op term was like at Fidelity mm -hmm. to students that are interested in learning more about our organization and potentially even joining. Um, so those are more formal. I myself have gone to a few job fairs and I imagine I will continue going to job fairs, but that's great because you really um, get that human touch. You really get to put a face to the resume and you get to speak to that person as well, really gauge their passion, their interests. And from those opportunities, you get to meet, not only meet candidates, but also see their potential for current or even future opportunities. You know, developing like a pipeline of candidates, something we do often uh, in recruitment because you never know when a position is gonna come up and you'd rather have a candidate sort of ready to be able to slide into that mm -hmm. role as soon as possible. Informally, what you can do if you're on the job hunt is of course let your closest network know, family, friends, and they can help you get introduced to people in the industry and that way make those connections go more organically. Um, when it comes to LinkedIn, if you've just met someone at a more professional event, adding them on LinkedIn right after is great because them meeting you is still fresh in their minds mm -hmm. and you can continue to build that relationship there. Um, if you don't know someone, that's fine as well. If you have a mutual uh, connection, you can ask them, maybe do an e-introduction for you, that could be great. And then if you don't know the person at all, sort of cold messaging them, you can do that too. Some people are responsive as well to that. Um, but it's more so just to, when you do send those messages, show that you have an interest in that field. Awesome, cool. Um, so as someone who was a co-op student yourself and has gone through the process um, and has been on the other end of the recruitment cycle, what advice would you give to either students or um, new grads or people who are wanting to pivot in their careers when they're job searching? Yeah, I think it's really important just to keep an open mind and be open to anything that can come your way. I think even for myself, like I said, I, I didn't originally start in HR, but I found myself there. And it's really important, especially coming out of school, you're leaving a pretty safe and, and structured environment going out there into a world full of possibilities. So, and that's great, you should really take advantage of that. With that being said, you really wanna focus on jobs that are um, to your interests, to your skills, and that you really feel like you can actually make a contribution to that's meaningful. Um, but then, yeah, like you were saying, it's okay to also change your mind. You might think coming out of school, okay, I wanna do this, or I wanna do that, or I wanna get a master's here, a master's there. Um, or some sort of designation, and then you might actually get into a role like that and figure, mm, you know, I like it, but I might be interested in another area. So it's okay to explore, especially the beginning of your career. Mm -hmm. That's really what it's for. Um, so that's something that I always tell students coming out of school too. It's just be open to really any opportunity, and even if it's not where you want to be long term, you'll gain a lot of great skills from that position that'll help you eventually in your career. 
Something that is also really important to consider is that a career is not linear. And I think mm -hmm. people usually think that, okay, I do step A, step B, step C, step D. Um, but it's really full of loop-de-loops mm -hmm. because you constantly, like you're saying, you have to pivot, you have to change, um, and you have to adapt depending on the situation too, which is also a key thing that we look for uh, mm -hmm. when we're looking at candidates. We want people who are flexible, adaptable, and that's important for you to also practice in your own life and really just be open because it doesn't really matter where you end up, just know that by continuously pushing yourself, continuously working hard, you'll, you will end up where you're meant to be. Yeah, that's really cool. And I know even in different positions that might not necessarily be um, industry specific, like you know, marketing, IT, accounting, HR, mm -hmm. um, that you can do in a number of industries. I think it's probably helpful to explore those different industries and have an open mind there. I know I've done that myself. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, really cool opportunity to meet new people and learn new things. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you so much for joining us today, Magda. It's Thanks. been such a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks to everyone who tuned into today's episode of Fidelity Next. We hope you're feeling more inspired to start seeking out new opportunities. And like I said at the start of the show, we're currently taking applications for our fall co-op term until May 24th. This is your chance to join other students from different schools and backgrounds like Magda for some incredible work experience paired with lots of opportunities to learn and collaborate. You can send your application via careers.fidelity.ca or keep an eye out on Fidelity Canada's LinkedIn account for chances to apply. Best of luck to all those job hunting and we'll see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.